Hello everyone, welcome to the session number four of the Logic Machine training course. In the previous uh, sessions, we have seen how to configure the Logic Machine, uh, update uh, the firmware, create and import the objects uh, from our the KNX uh, project file. Also, we have... No? Can you hear me? Hello, testing? Yes, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so, as I was saying, uh, in the previous sessions, we've seen how to configure it, the logic machine, how to create visualizations, how to uh, use the scripting engine of the logic machine, and how to create uh, very uh, simple but powerful logics in this equipment. Today, we're going to uh, integrate uh, the, the systems uh, available that we can configure with the logic machine. In this case, we're going to configure Modbus, we're going to configure DALI ballasts, we're going to use uh, one wire uh, temperature probes, we're going to configure also uh, Philips Hue lamps, we're going to use uh, Notion devices, C Wave devices, Bluetooth devices, and we're going to uh, make a quick pick of the streaming player, the Amati Linear player. Also, we're going to upload all the information to a, a superior system, as it is a BMS uh, server. So, let's get right to it. Uh, first thing we're going to do is integrate Modbus. Uh, for Modbus configuration, uh, in the Logic Machine tab, in the Logic Machine screen, we can see that we have a specific Modbus tab. When we click in the Modbus tab, uh, we can see, uh, in this case, we don't have any object, any uh, interface, any Modbus device connected. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is create a, a Modbus profile, so the logic machine knows uh, which address, it's, uh, let's say, which object of the logic machine, of the Modbus device. For this, we need to open, uh, to create this uh, profile, we're going to use the, the manual of the device that we're using. In this case, we have a thermostat. Let me find very quickly. <clears throat> there we go. Um, let's open the, the user manual of the thermostat and also you can find these instructions in the web page, the OpenRB web page, uh, in the in the up, the part. Uh, let's say openrb.com/docs. Here you can find the instructions for configuring the. Mm, is it? Here we go. The Modbus profile. Here we have all the instructions. Uh, we're going to uh, be showing you uh, step by step, but you got the instructions there. Okay, every Modbus device uh, user manual should have a list of the registers that this device uses. In this case, if we go to the bottom, here we can see that we have the Modbus communication uh, options, and below it we have the registers, uh, a register table that show us all the configurations of each of those registers. In this case, we have input registers, we have holding registers, and coil or output registers. Uh, and also, in, in each table, we have the information about the name of the, of the variable, the type, if it's read-only, writable, or any other type of variable. Uh, in this case, uh, the range, is, and uh, most important, the address, the address of the register and the function that we're going to use, the Modbus function that we're going to use to read or uh, send information to this register. Okay, now that we have the manual uh, created, we need to use a, a profile. We have an example profile in the OpenRB webpage. We can find it in, uh, in this example, we can find the profile of the 20 IO extension module 
this this profile can help as a example on how to configure here we have there this is the modbus profile that we are we are going to create uh, for that specific device in this case the thermostat uh, here we can see that we have a specification of the manufacturer the description of the device and the mapping of the all the registers that we have in this case as you can see we have uh, 20 outputs and inputs and we can uh, assign to every in this case object output we can uh, assign a boost data type uh, depending on which type of object we have the type of register that we're using in this case it's a coil the address and if it's writable or not writable all the information you can find it in the Modbus profile description okay for this thermostat I'm going to use a, a an editor that a, an online editor it's free and we, I like it very much in this case it's the JSON uh, JSON editor online yeah, I use it uh, very much uh, it has a very good graphical interface and um, I have it up uploaded already we can open and save this uh, profile from the this web page we can also load uh, sorry we can load this file into the editor and uh, start well modifying the the information that we have in this case we can see that we have a coil type register named working status with the zero with the address in the zero so uh, if we go to the user manual and we go to the coil registers here we can see we have working status we have uh, the address of the register is the zero 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 we have to be very careful with this address many um, some user manuals and uh, it states on the top that says that the all the addresses starts in the zero address but they reflect it in the table as they start in the one so we have to be careful in which address we are starting uh, here we can see that this is a, a binary object it's a zero one object so in the editor I should put it in let's put it in, in parallel so so we can see it mm, no it wasn't a good idea there we go okay so here we can see the working status it's a zero one so in this case the bus data type it's a boolean so we can set to bool the, it's not writable so it's read only and we can set custom values for each value that this variable can 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 take for example we can see uh, let's search some in here once we've done all this uh, configuration for all the, the the variables the registers that we are going to use or if we want with all the registers that we have in the in the table sometimes there are too many and maybe we are not going to use all of them we can configure just what we need the ones we need uh, let me search for for example I have here uh, there we go fine coil type if we go to the fine coil type we can see that the variations of this object can be 2 equals to call hit in two pipes here we go 4 and 6 are different values that we can change in in the in this profile so once we have created this profile we can check other options in this in this document uh, we can also set a different uh, not also not only a bus data type but we can also set a specific address knx address to that object so when we insert it into the logic machine it's let's say it's uh, a little simpler of course this is recommended only during development but we can also set it and we can also change uh, information such as uh, sw uh, bad, bad swaps, swipes swaps I'm sorry uh, this all will depend on the manual of our device so once we have this profile we're going to the logic machine in the mode boost tab and we're going to select the profiles button 
down uh, in the center. We have a preloaded profile. It's the example that I showed you of the U UIO 20, the Modbus uh, extension I.O. module from Logic Machine. Uh, and we are going to click Add Profile. We click Add Profile and we look for the file that we have just created. In this case, libraries, Modbus. The, all this information, you have it in, your, in the material that we have uploaded for you. In this case, I'm going to use thermostat. It has the address already set. We, of course, can uh, download this profile so we can edit if we have made any mistakes or we can also download it for use as a example for creating new new profiles so once we have uploaded this profile we're going to configure the rtu settings of the of the modbus port of the rs845 bus in this case we're using rtu uh, communication Logic Machine also supports uh, TCP, Modbus TCP conf uh, communication. Uh, it's configured differently. We are going to see that either way. We in here write the port. This uh, port name, we can find it in the settings config in this system configuration, sorry, in the status tab. We can see all the, the available serial ports that we have. In this case, we configure it as the baud rate and all the information that we have taken from the manual of the device. Once we save, the Modbus is already, uh, let's say, enabled, and we click on RTU scan. With this tool, we can search all the devices connected to the uh, Modbus bus. In this case, we can search from, in this case, I'm going to search from 1 to 10 because I only have one device. We can search from 1 to 247, which is the top of the Modbus addressing. And notice that we only have 30 seconds for this search, so maybe it's recommended to change and search by, by bits, let's say from 1 to 10, from 10 to 20, and so. In this case, we are going to search, and it should show us the device that we have connected. This can take up to 30 seconds as we read before. Uh, when that, we have of course two, t two, for two ways of uh, adding a Modbus device. We can add it using this tool, which is the RTU scan. When we click add device, in this case I'm going to name this as thermostat1. Uh, no, but say two because we created one thermostat previously and we select the profile that we have created and a, a poll interval to detect the information of the Modbus. In this case, I'm going to leave it this way and save. Once we save, the information has been uploaded to this list and we can see here that we have an RTU device with this configuration. So the other way that we can add a device, it's using the button, the add device button. If we already know which is the address of that device, we can uh, set it right here. And of course we can create, we can add a TCP IP Modbus device. If we click on TCP IP, uh, it will change some options and it will ask to uh, insert the IP and the port of that uh, specific device. And that's the only difference. The profile, it works this exact same profile that we're using for the RTU. So we don't need to create a different type of profile for each device. In this case, let's add, let's add a TCP, even though we don't have one, 192.168.1.240, uh, for example. And let's call it UIO, UIO20 and let's set the IP profile. So when we save, it will show that we have a TCP device with this address added. This way we can, uh, we can know which type of device, which type of communication we have on every device. Okay, once we have added our device, we're going to do the mapping. The mapping, it's just the, ass the, the assignment of the, the, these registers that we have uh, set with the profile file 
and we will set it with the specific object that we're going to control this object, this device with. In this case, for that, we click on the mapping button. When we click on the mapping button, it will show all the object, all the objects that we have created uh, in the profile, in the profile file. Uh, and for link, this object, this uh, let's say register with uh, the object that we're using, we just click on it, and it will ask to give a name and a, a object, uh, and a new object. In this case, I have it in the five. Okay, let's set it that way. Uh, we also have the, the, it asks us if we want to send this information to the bus. If the information is relevant uh, to send to the bus, we can also change and set this, this check button. Okay, we click save. And we do this with, let's do it with a few, let's do it with a few objects, a few registers, so we can see the information is being uploaded. Here we can see that already this file is being, let's say, filled with the information from the bot bus. Each, in this case, 15 seconds, we will receive information from the bus. Click again, save. Very quickly, let's set a few more, such as fan status. I've made a previous visualization, a very quick visualization that I can show you. Uh, also how the information can be loaded. Let me get the on off. Temperature. Fan speed. And the external temperature sensor. And we are done. There we go. So with this information, I think we're okay. Electrical heating, okay. Uh, let's clear it that way. Uh, when we close this, uh, after 15 seconds, it will receive all the information from this uh, RTU device. When we go to the objects tab and filter, in this case by 511, 51, I'm sorry, we can see here that we have all the objects, all the new objects created. And in here we have uh, the values of the Modbus. If we change any value directly from the Modbus device, for example, you're changing the fan speed, set point. the set point, sorry, we will see it in temperature that the set point, the set point will change. Uh, in this case, we've seen 18 degrees. And this information can also be changed from here the fan speed, for example, here we have the low, the medium, and the high speed, and we will see how this will change without touching anything. <laughs> After 15 high. seconds, it's in high. Okay. It's in high, you can say high. Okay, 15 seconds. I think it was it. Low. Low. Okay, we can also change the, the information. There we go. There we go. It changed the high and low, and in here it set the low. Um, the current values, the, sorry, the values that we have changed in the profile will be loaded in the custom values in here. So in this case, for the fan speed, uh, for the fan speed, yes. If we click custom values, we can see that the information that we have created in the profile, it will be uh, down. It will be loaded. Let's say in here. So we have, a, for example, for the object two, we have the text low, medium, high, and auto. And this will be made automatically by the logic machine using the profile that we have created. So this is a very quick and easy way that we can create uh, and configure our Modbus devices just by creating a profile file. We have a lot of profiles, uh, examples in the, in the material, in the documents that we have sent you. So you can check that out and uh, practice a little with your own 
devices. Okay, the next thing that we are going to control is the DALI, the DALI, yeah, the DALI ballast. Sorry, had a lapsus. Okay, for that we're going to the reactor because we have it connected there. Once once we click on the reactor, that that is the DALI part of the installation that we have. Uh, for that, we're going to the DALI tab that we can find in here. We have uh, on the left the, the, the different addresses, the different uh, gateways that we have installed in case that we have uh, RS 845 uh, gateway device uh, gateways uh, installed in our logic machine. Ooh, yeah, extension gateways, it will show in here once we click on scan gateways. This will scan uh, the internal gateways and the external connected uh, gateways also. So to look for the different ballasts that we have installed in our DALI, I have already created, let's, let's erase, erase all of this. Erase, 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 okay. So to find the, the ballast that we have connected, we install all our installation or our DALI installation. It's a very important point that you have to use a certified DALI uh, power source for installing the this DALI network. A logic machine doesn't power the DALI the DALI network, so you need a specific uh, DALI power source. Okay, we select the internal gateway and we click on scan devices. We have a few options. We can uh, full scan, setting the short address of the of the ballast. We can scan and clear the device mapping that we have already made. We can also make a full scan, keeping the, the, the mapping that we have created with other objects, and just uh, find the devices and do not touch anything on the logic machine. In this case, let's make a full scan, setting the short addresses. And it should show that we have three ballast, even though we have one, it will show us the three channels of the one ballast that we have. This is a RGB ballast, so it have uh, three different channels that we can control independently. Here we go. Here we have the three different uh, ballasts, if we might. Uh, to configure this ballast and to begin the control of this uh, installation, we're going to make click in every ballast and change the name. In this case, let's put it to Red Dali. Red Dali. Let's turn off the light a bit so we can see it better. Uh, we change the address to uh, 17, 17, 1, 1, because it's the on off object. And we have the scale object 17, 1, 3 sorry, three, one, red value, and we save. We do this for each and every object, a green dali, 17, one, two, 17, three, one, three, two, save, and the last one, the blue. Blue, blue dali. We select 1713 and we select 1713. 1733, sorry. Okay. Set. And now, if we send any information to any of these objects, the light will change. In this case, let's send directly from here an object, a, a value. We click on the value object and we set it. For example, I'm going to set it to uh, 20. It's not 20%, it's 20 in bits. But when we send, the light will start turning off. Let's send it to a little bit more. Let's say 35. There we can see how the color is changing. 50. 100. <laughs> That's a little bit better. We can also change another color. And the color will start changing. If I set it to 100 also, we can see the color 
better. There we go. <coughs> a little purple. <coughs> so, uh, we can see that we have the three different channels for each one of the objects. In this case, I don't want to create a visualization with three different scrolls and the user have to, uh, let's say, find its way to, to set a color, a specific color. So for that, I'm going to use a small script using the address 1730. Uh, Let me see for a second. 17. Okay, I'm going to use the DALI color. I have created an object called DALI color that we're going to set it to a data type of uh, RGB object, RGB color. So this object, when we click on set value, it will show us a palette, color palette, that we can select the color that we need. We click, and when we click save, the script that I'm going to create, it will send the specific color for the specific uh, channel of the ballast. Uh, this example, we can find it also in the web page, in the examples, uh, in the example side of the web page. And also we have it on the material that I've sent it to you. Uh, for that, we go to script and we go to the. Um, oh, sorry, I don't have it here. Okay. Just a second. So, what we're going to do is create a new event for this object. And in that event, we're going to copy and paste the information, the script that we're going to find in the examples. Okay, uh, control find. Medium status, okay. <coughs> Second, RGB, RGB control, okay. So the code, uh, how to split three byte object into three objects of one byte. So we copy and paste the script. This is the script. And the only thing that we're going to change is the object addresses of each group, in this case, we will change it to 1731, which is the DALI red. We will change this, the green value to the 17, 1732 green value. And the blue value, we're going to set it to 1733 blue value. So uh, the rest of the code, we should not touch it. It does what it's meant to do. We save it and we can test it using a run script or a button from the visualization. So uh, once I click on any of these items, for example, let's set it to blue, we will see how it will send the color to each one of the, to each one of the, to the channels and it will set the color that we need. I don't know if you can see it, it might be too bright, but the color changes. Let's set it to red. There we go. We have the red color. Here we can see it sends 100% to the red and 0% to the other colors. No? No camera? Oh, sorry. There you go. Okay, now you can see it. We have set the color to red. Let's set it to green again so we can see. And there we go, we have green. And also, sorry, wrong button. Again, we click on the set value and we can change it to any color that we need. We can also receive the information from the DALI, from the DALI channels. We can receive the information so we can have a feedback on the, on these objects. For that we have, a DALI's status a script that we are going to create as a, a we're going to create it as a resident script so it will be uh, repeated every 
a few seconds DALI feedback. Sleep interval, let's set it to five seconds, active. And the same thing, we open the editor, paste the code. It may, uh, this, uh, these codes maybe uh, need some, some information, some changes, but in this case I have it already set, so the only thing I need to do is click save. When we go to the objects tab, we will see how the information is loaded. Uh, here we can see the state of the on-off, it's off. The percentage object is also, let me see, 17.5.1.2.3, okay. It's configured, yes. We might need a color status object. Just a second. Seventeen three zero. No, it's already created. Here, let's change this to color. Just a second. RGB color save. We should be able to receive the information from each different channel once we change a color. Also, there are a lot of scripts that we can use and create to control our DALI device. We also can uh, do some sort of configuration to the DALI to the DALI ballasts. Also, we can find it that, that information on how to configure these ballasts using the docs and the web page, the DALI gateway common reference. When we go to this uh, this document, we can see that we can send commands to the DALI, the DALI ballast. These are, all, these are all the available commands that we can send with the certain type of information that we will need, if it's addressable, if we will expect a reply. Uh, well, we can set a lot of options. It's always recommended that we configure previously each uh, ballast separately so we are sure that we have configured it well. This will help us to configure some something that we have forgotten or to make any type of uh, automatic script that configures the object. This one is the object, sorry. Okay, so once we have created and configured our DALI device, Okay, once we have configured our DALI device, we can go on and uh, let's configure the one-wire devices. One-wire devices uh, are small devices that we can uh, connect very easily. Uh, the only thing that these devices need is a, a, a powering, let's say, a power source that the logic machine can serve for it. And we also, for example, we have the puzzle in here. I will show you. Uh, it only needs uh, three cables, two for powering with five through 24 volts and one for the communication, the one wire communication. I don't know if you are able to see this. This device has uh, two inputs or two output outputs that we can configure. Uh, for this presentation, we're going to use a uh, one wire, a one wire uh, temperature probe this temperature probe also, uh, very small, very cheap, of course, and we have the three uh, cables that we're going to connect to our logic machine. The integration with this type of devices, it's very easy. We just click on the one wire tab, and in this case, I'm going to delete this. I have already configured. So uh, for the logic machine to uh, obtain which devices it has connected. The only thing we need to do is connect such devices. So I disconnect and reconnect the device so the logic machine knows that it has detected something and in any minute now we will see the object uh, update 
in this logic machine. There we go. There we have that it has detected a, a one wire temperature sensor. It has an unique ID that we can use. Also, uh, to, the conf to configure this one wire device, in this case, we are going to click on the device, set a name, temperature probe. We set, of course, a pole interval because this, this type of configuration the camera itself again? No. Okay. Uh, for this type of configuration, um, we need to, to make uh, a polling to the devices. So uh, it will tell us to uh, set a present device object. This will tell if the device is or not present. Uh, let's create a new device, a new object called with the address uh, 4211 and a new object. 4212. So uh, in 4212.11 will uh, say either it's created or not, uh, if it's present or no, the device. And in the 41.2, it will show the temperature of this object. In this case, we can select if we want to send this, uh, address, this uh, information to the boss. And also, we can select a uh, which uh, difference of value when the value of this object it's uh, different by in this case 0 0.2 volts 0 0.2 degrees it will send an update to that value also we can set a configuration value a compensation value for this uh, temperature probe uh, in the case that we need it so we save it will show in white as we've seen with the other objects uh, all these uh, devices, for example, the Modbus devices, the one wire devices, and all the devices that we are seeing, such as the objects in the list, if we have any problem with the communication with the device, it will show in red. If we have configured it correctly, it will show in white. And uh, if we have just received a telegram or information from this device, it will show in green. So there we can see that we have a temperature of 28.4. 0.4375, a lot of decimals for temperature, but we have the temperature set. So if we go to the objects and we filter for uh, 42, I said, we search, there we go. We have the device is present, the object is true, and the temperature is 28.4.44. Uh, we can also create events for these uh, objects and we can create uh, well, all the logic and all the visualization that we need uh, already using these devices or send it to any other uh, any other protocol any other um, any other device such for example as Modbus if we need this temperature from one wire uh, be sent to a Modbus device uh, it's very easy we just link this one to the other one and very easily we have uh, intercommunication between systems. So uh, this is one wire, very easy, very uh, simple to configure. Now uh, let's configure some uh, Philips Hue lightning, lighting. Uh, for that I have created a certain, kind, a certain number of objects that I've called Hue. In this case we can see that we have a lot of Hue objects. Uh, for configuration of these Hue objects, we need to use in the scripting tab a user library. The user library for the DALI configuration, of course, we can find it in the examples tab of the web of the Logic Machine web page, OpenRB web page. Uh, we have all the information also uh, there to create uh, this uh, this integration. I click the wrong one. I click DALI. Let's go to Hue. Uh, of course, we copy and paste the script that we find in the example, and it will show us, uh, it will ask us to uh, input two values, these two values. We need to put the IP address of the bridge on the, of the Philips Hue bridge, and we need to set a user for this bridge. Okay, to configure these two data, 
we have a specific we have a, a specific script that we can use. In this case, if we click on, uh, I believe I'm using an older version. Let me go very quickly. Okay. Uh, we can use uh, different tools. For example, to find the IP address, we can always use a an, an IP, uh, an IP Finder or any other app that we can use from our, our mobile device or any other, let's say, computer program or a mobile application. In this case, I use an application from for Android that will tell me which IP it's the IP for this device. Okay, once we have the IP of the device, we can go and uh, execute this instruction, which is bridge setup. We copy this this function bridge setup and let, we create, let's say, an event base. It doesn't matter which object or which configuration we do. It's just for one-time use. We create the script and we use this, this function. Uh, we need to, this function, uh, set to let's say value equals to the information given by the bridge setup and we're going to log this value this information so once we've done that we save and we run the script clicking the button on top of the of the bridge when we click the button on top of the bridge and execute this uh, instruction it will give us a a string containing the information for the user that we are going to put inside this uh, this field right here, the user field. Once we've done all the, these two configurations, we already have configured our Hue devices. Uh, this, I suppose, it will change when we have the uh, the, communi the direct communication using Sigby with the lamps. But uh, in the meanwhile, this works perfectly good. And now we have configured the bridge we can go on and do the same thing that we did with this instruction, the bridge to the top instruction, and we can use to send, a, not send to like, no, search the hue lights. If we click and search the hue lights, for example, let's do this, search hue lights, we save, we run the script, any value doesn't matter, and we go to the log, we will see that we have searching for new devices, and the information, uh, received by those uh, by this script uh, will be stored in the bridge so now uh, when we want to control a, dev a device uh, the bridge will already know which device we're trying to configure uh, also to send any value for example we need to send a binary value to any uh, to any lamp we're going to create the object in this case it's an on off for an on-off object, it's a switch object, that we're going to create an event and we're going to use this script that we have in here. This script will uh, receive the value from the object, from the event, as we've seen in the scripting area, and it will send it using this function, send to light, to the given lamp ID. In this case, uh, as I'm changing the hue light one, it will be to the address one in the bridge. Once we've copy and paste this, I'm going to copy this, we we'll save it. We can run the script and we can change the value, for example, on, and we can see how the light turns on. Uh, we will do this for the, for the other lights, all the lights that we have available. The only thing that we need to do is change the address. In this case, the lamp ID is the number two. We will save and we can turn on the lamp number two very easily. Save. Ah, it's sent off. Okay, let's turn on. There we go. And we can do the same with the lamp number four, which is the left strip that we have on the left button. Like number three, we don't have it connected, but it works the same way. So we save, run the script, click on, and there we go. The light strip is on. Also, 
Sorry? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yeah. <laughs> also, we can set a color value, a color object, so we can change the color for these uh, hue lamps. In this case, we click and we select a different color. I have already configured. I don't know if you can see. Let me switch off the other lights. Off, so you can see the color of one of them. There we go. We have the green light in the in the middle of the screen. Okay, this is script. Uh, also, you can find it in the instructions of the example of how to configure the hue lights in the web page. It's a small script, very easy to understand. In the same way, we receive the value and we send the value using the set RGB to the given lamp ID. In this case, let's do the same thing for the hue color lamp 2. So once we've done this a couple of times, it's automatic and we just create the object, uh, create the script, paste, change the address and save and we have uh, the configuration ready to use. Of course, as always, we can also create uh, any other code that we need down here uh, using the information received by the, uh, the event. It won't make any, it won't have any trouble uh, executing both of the instructions. So in case that we receive, for example, the red color, we can make uh, another action in any other system whatsoever without trouble. So that's where the power is in the logic machine, that we can create any, any number and any, of any type of scripts very easily. There we go, we have blue, and let's set this one to uh, red. There we go, deep red. So very easily, we can create a color objects and uh, on-off objects for the hue installation. Also, we can create a value, send value, and of course, percentage. Uh, all this information, as I said before, you can uh, find it in the uh, in this in the I'm sorry you can find it in the web page in the examples uh, part of the web page so this is the hue uh, installation control and uh, let me turn off the discotheque very quickly so we can keep on with the next systems uh, it, I should just turn off like this, like this, and like this, off. Okay, uh, next thing we're going to be in, uh, integrating, uh, uh, integrating to our system, to our logic machine, is the uh, Z-Wave uh, devices. For the Z-Wave devices, we go to the uh, main screen, to the app uh, screen and we, we click on the app store in the app store in the app uh, list that we can install different apps we are going to find the c-wave application uh, in, in in order to use the c-wave application we need to have a, a c-wave controller installed in our logic machine in this case we see here that we have a small pen drive, a small uh, C-Wave controller connected to the USB. To the USB port of the logic machine. Once the app has been installed, it's always recommended to delete the cache of the browser. In this case, I have already did. We click on the Z-Wave and we can see that uh, the daemon uh, let's say the, the background script controlling that uh, uh, gateway, it's already started. We can change the frequency of the, of the controller by changing in here the information. We stop the daemon, change the frequency and start it again. So we can control uh, devices from different, uh, from these different regions. In this case, it's only one region per device. So, uh, we have to be careful to buy only the same region devices. 
Uh, in this case, it will show you it will show you that you have the static PC controller installed. This other device uh, it detected it automatically in previous sessions. <laughs> I didn't delete it, but uh, we can add a new device. Just clicking on the add device, the controller will uh, start its uh, add device sequence. And to add a new device, we need to click several times the small button that the C-Wave has in, in its hardware. Not the C-Wave controller, but the C-Wave device that we're controlling. In this case, I'm going to change and click a, a two-button device that we have. Just a second. Click several times, and it should let me cancel add device again, and let's try again. Okay. Let me try just by uh, restarting. Okay, let me see again very quickly. Add device. I have another device here that we could add, which is the button that we have connected. Sorry. And here we have, well, it just updated the number. Uh, in this case, uh, we have added uh, this small button, this small push button that we, we can see here. This is a C-Wave button, and we're going to add also a, in, the, in the pack. We're going to add also a, a Z-Wave socket. And again, we click on Add Device, and we click several times the small button on the device, and it should show us. Probably it's because I disconnected and reconnected. Uh, let me do just one. Yeah. It, I'm plugging. No, no, no. La red, la red. Let's restart just a second. We have a, we are having technical difficulties. Please wait. <laughs> no, just kidding. So, once the logic machine is restarted, we should be able to see these objects. Okay, we go to the C wave again, and the daemon is started. List of device. We add a new device and we click several times the button. There we go. That was it. It has uh, installed the smart switch 5 gen from AOTech, and let's add the new the other device that was I was trying. There we go. Okay, it's important that you don't, you should not unplug the controller while the logic machine is turned on. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have found these two devices. In this case, the smart switch, which is a a plug. So we are going to call it a C Wave plug. When we click on the device, it shows this configuration. We can also set a location for it. Let's click Office. And we can set a switch object for this device. In this case, let's create a new random object. I don't care in this moment. 
We can also uh, receive information from the C-Wave device. In this case, we can receive the power consumed by this uh, device, the voltage, and the current that it's uh, being consumed. So we save. It created uh, a few address, a few objects automatically. And uh, when we go to the object list in the logic machine, we will see the objects are created. And we can control directly the, the plug from the object tab. It was 1118, 1115. Here it is, C wave plug switch. So when we change the value from here, save, we can see how the, less, the, the little table lamp has turned on and we can turn it off. And we have control from our object list. Of course, we can create a, any script. As we can see here, it's consuming 51 watts at 228 volts with uh, zero amps and we can have all the information from the C-Wave device. Uh, C-Wave also uh, needs certain configuration from each device. <clears throat> In this case, if we click on the C-Wave plug, we have an advanced tab that it will show us a few configurations that we can see on the device manual. This configuration is specific for each device, for each uh, manufacturer. So uh, we need to pay very close attention to what all of this configuration means. Uh, some devices are uh, passive devices and well, uh, a little different type of devices and configuration that needs to be done to configure uh, correctly this uh, C-Wave devices. Uh, also, we, can, we could configure very quickly the double switch. Uh, let's set it to create a new random object. We only have two objects. I'm going to call this uh, <coughs> lamps, uh, Z-Wave lamps, Z-Wave lamps, and then we save. And when we go to the object list, the same way. We will see the information when we go to, no, too much. Uh, also, these objects, we can select if we want to send automatically this value to the bus, and we can set a polling time, so we can be uh, always checking what's the status of that, uh, of that object. The status and the, and the control in this case are the same object. Uh, we need to be very careful uh, what we the, of the scripts or the configuration that we do because of this this feature. So very quickly, let's find the C wave lamps, and let me change. Uh, let's turn. It's already turned on. Let me turn it off and back on so we can see the change. There we go, light on, light off. It's a very quick, the configuration is very quick and the communication between devices also, it's very quick. So uh, the next configuration we're going to, the next uh, device that we're going to integrate, it's an ocean, of course. Uh, the ocean configuration, it's very easy to use. We can, in this case, configure it in the uh, reactor device or in the uh, ambient uh, device and the logic machine ambient or in the logic machine reactor because we have uh, interfaces for both of those, those devices. In this case, we have uh, two devices that we're going to configure. We have these two uh, small uh, push buttons. These push buttons, does, uh, they don't need any batteries because they work with the force of the pressure uh, in, in the same button. Uh, in this case, the configuration is very easy. So the detection, we only are going to press the button and in the screen, in the Enotion screen, we can see that we have three different tabs. We have 
the interfaces tab that we will show, that we will see are the installed interfaces in the logic machine. And we have the Notion to KNX. So uh, these are for input devices. And then we have the KNX to Notion configuration. In this case, we're using uh, some push buttons. So it's from Notion to the logic machine. Uh, to discover these devices, we are only going to click on them. I just click on this and we will see how the device has just showed up. So let's configure one by one so we can see the difference. Uh, once I click on this device, it will set, it will uh, ask us for a device name. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, beige uh, push button so I can differentiate them. And it will ask for a profile. This profile is, uh, is specified by the manufacturer, by the, in the manual, the, we should find the information for this profile. These uh, profiles are, are already loaded in the logic machine. So the only thing we need to do is to select it. In this case, it's a, a rocker switch, so we can configure it either of these ways. We can set it as only one rocker or as two different rockers or four different buttons. In this case, let's set it to four different buttons so we can control different things with each button. So uh, once we've say, detected and set a name and a profile for this device, I'm going to click on the other device and it will show that the device has been found. There we go. Of course, uh, each device has a unique ID. Uh, we have no trouble changing. Uh, we will not have trouble uh, detecting information from another device. In this case, this is a white push button. There we go. And the profile, it's the same. It's the same type of buttons. But in this case, I will use a two rocker. So uh, when we click the one, icon in the button, it will turn on or it will send a one. And when we click the zero or the circle button, it will send a zero. So let's configure the beige button. When we click on the mapping button, it will show us that we have four different fields that we can fill. In this case, I'm going to set it to one, 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 and a one, one, a two, and let's set it to one, one, three. Let's set these three buttons and let's set a, a general off. A general off is zero, one, zero. General off, zero, one, zero. General off. So in here we have different options. We can, uh, when we click here, it will send a toggle. When we click the button, it will send a toggle. And every time we click, it will send a toggle. If we don't set this, it will work like a like a doorbell. So when we click, it will send one and we release, it will send a zero. Uh, let's leave it that way. So save and I click one. It will turn in this case on all, all the lights because I'm clicking the object of all lights. And if I click uh, specifically one by one, we will see how the lights turn on and off depending on the button that I'm pressing. So the same thing we can control with the rocker, with the white rocker, we click on mapping. In this case, I'm going to select the 17, not the 17, no, the one, 120 for the light one, the one, 121 for the hue light two. 21 and 22. Let me see. Oh, no, I have, uh, of course, I have it in the same. Uh, I have it in the same uh, lamp. So I need to turn on from. I first have to turn on the C wave in order to be able to control the other lights. Okay, but as we can see, it's very easy, the configuration for the Inotion devices. Uh, it's just a click and it will detect it and we can set the information to the other 
objects that we need. Okay, in the same way, the configuration for the devices that we are going to send information to them in, in Ocean from the KNX, from the logic machine to the Notion devices. We just click on Add New Devices. Once we have it powered and we know uh, which uh, is the address, uh, one, one, we will be connecting one by one the devices and it will set the addresses from the zero to the top number and it will be setting this information. So we set the address of that device, we set a device name and of course we select a profile from the list and just clicking save it will add the new Notion device and just by that clicking on map we can send information to the different devices uh, to the different Notion devices very easily and very quickly. So uh, next thing that we're going to control uh, let me just do quickly what I wanted to do first okay there we go, the C wave is started, so I can turn off the lamps by using the Inotion controllers. There we go, turn off. Okay, so now we are going to configure the uh, BLE, the Bluetooth Low Energy Devices. Uh, for this configuration, we are going to use the uh, Let's use this this I uh, this logic machine. Let me change the USB to a Bluetooth USB. So we can also use the ambient logic machine. The ambient logic machine has the Bluetooth built in, so we don't need to be doing this. In this case, let's wait to restart. Uh, when we buy, for example, a logic machine which doesn't have a Bluetooth Bluetooth interface by default, the this BLE tab it will not show. We will not be able to see because there is it's not there to create and to insert this tab in here, we're going to uh, install different packages. Uh, the packages, we install them in the system configuration tab here, system config. And then using the system uh, packages, we can see all the packages that we have installed. We're going to click in the green button. And uh, once we have searched in the OpenRB page, for the specific package that we will need in the firmware in the firmware page we can see in here that we have additional packages for the logic machine we select the packages that we need in this case we're going to need the BLE the Lib Bluetooth and the Lua BLE packages and we will install them uh, in order in this uh, in this section of the logic machine and once we've done that in the logic machine, we will see that we have the BLE tab. Of course, we connect the Bluetooth, uh, in this case, the Bluetooth interface, and it will start recording all the devices that are nearby. And it will show, well, all the devices nearby. In this case, we have the Mi, the Xiaomi uh, My Band. It's a small uh, bracelet that will show us the information from our paces and from uh, well battery information and it will allow us to uh, let's say uh, vibrate so we can have uh, let's say cognitive uh, visualization cognitive senses of the installation in this case we're going to select the Xiaomi my band profile all these profiles of course you can create them yourself or you can uh, use uh, a few examples that we have on either the forum of the logic machine or in the material that you have uh, available of this training course. In this case, I'm going to use Xiaomi My Band. So I click Save. Once I click Save, it will show the object in white and it will ask for it to give a name. In this case, Xiaomi Band, let's call it. 
and we set a poll interval. Let's do it a little bit quickly. 15 seconds. We have much time, and we select a, an object. In this case, I'm going to create a new object. 6511. No. Okay, sorry, 65, no, 6311. One. Second, 60, 61, one. 1, 2, 61, 3, and 61, 4. There we go. Uh, we can also uh, if we want the information to be sent to the bus, we can send it, just clicking in the checkbox. We save this information, and uh, when the 15 seconds are done, we will see values, value is being received from this uh, band. In this case, I have so many items, I'm not sure that I've selected the right one. But well, in the 15 seconds, in the objects, we will see how uh, this information is being uploaded and it will show the different values. In this case, it will change to true. The steps will update depending on the quantity and the steps that we have made with it. It will show us the battery level and uh, when we change the value of the vibrate object, for example, if I click it to on, we will see how the object is turned on for just one or two seconds. Uh, the, the, this device will vibrate and uh, it will turn off again just for the two seconds that it's configured. So uh, this is the configuration. There we go. It's not that device. Okay, so the configuration of the BLE, it's uh, as this simple. It's just uh, use the profile created. It's just I'm not sure with this device. There are too many devices. Okay, uh, so this is the configuration of the BLE. It's very easy, very quick, and we have it just in our hand, literally. So uh, now we're going to uh, see a little bit. Sonos. Alexa. Yeah, no, it's, uh, okay, Alexa, yes. Let's go to Alexa. Let's configure the Alexa device. She's already listening. Let me turn off the lights. Okay, for the Alexa configuration, we're going to the app, uh, to the app screen, and we're going to select in the App Store, we're going to add the Amazon Alexa app. Once we've created the Amazon Alexa app, uh, for this app, we need to have created a Logic Machine account, Logic Machine account that we create using the Mosaic visualization system. We click on the Mosaic and we create a new, we create a new user and password using the cloud solution. Click the cloud, it's the cloud beta. I already have one, Logic Machine, this. Uh, once we've created this account, we're going to the Alexa app. We click in here and we will sing, sign in inside this app. It's very simply, we just click on sign in. You use the user and password, sign in, and there we go. Once we've done this, we are able to uh, start adding uh, objects. In this case, we can add lamps, we can add locks, thermostats, and other devices. The add lamp, uh, the add lamp uh, function, we can add a switch objects and a status for this switch object. We can also set dimmer objects and status for this dimmer object. Let's set a, a one, one three object, which is the regulate uh, the dimmer light. Let's set this to one four three. It's the state of that light. One three three value and one five three the state of the light. So uh, once we've done all this configuration, we can set a friendly name. In this case, we're going to call it 
uh, light one or let's call it office light office office light there we go in the friendly description we can set uh, this description it says friendly because we have to set a name that we can uh, speak that we can say and uh, the Alexa will recognize in this case it, it should be uh, full words uh, with some sort of meaning at least for us it's not good if we put uh, 0 0.306 or something like that so we add the lamp and uh, to configure the let's say the Alexa side of this uh, installation we're going to after we configure all the the basic configuration of Alexa the let's say inbox manual uh, that she has uh, we open the app, we set a Wi-Fi connection to Alexa, and we set another Alexa. We go to the alexa.amazon.co, in this case, .uk. Yes, yes, I know. Okay. So, uh, once we have configured all that, uh, in the Alexa app, we're going to find... Okay, this is the this is the the graphical interface of the Alexa. For that, we're going to go if we click on the smart home. Here, it will say that we don't have. In this case, I already have it. We don't have any enable skills. And for to find new skills, we're going to click enable skills button, or we're going to go to the skills button on the left. Uh, so we're going to search for the logic machine search logic machine and it will show that we have one result logic machine from embedded systems we click on it and it will show a, on the top right a green button saying to uh, enable this skill uh, once we click on this enable skill it will show a small screen just like this one I won't do it because uh, it will disable it and to connect it again it might be a little tedious and time consuming it will show a, a, a page just like this where we put our uh, email and our password and once we have authorized this object it will show this screen saying us that the skill is enabled so once we've done this and in our logic machine we have added all the devices that we need, all the lamps, all the locks, all the thermostats. In this case, I'm going to add a new one called All Lights, for example. Let me add All, all Lights. And the switch object will be General Off of all the layers. We don't have any status object, so I'm going to leave it this way. And Add Lamp. Once we've added all the objects for example we can add also a blind uh, let's say uh, bedroom blind let's copy this paste this and we click in an object which is the 11 1 1 11 3 uh, which is the status no, it doesn't have, of course. So uh, we go with the 11 uh, position, the height of the dra of the blind, and the status of the one eleven five one. There we go. We put the percentage object and the state and the status object. We add. We can add it as a lamp. It doesn't matter. It, the only thing that matters is the name. In this case, it's bedroom blind. Once we've done all the uh, all the configuration in the logic machine side, we're going to click in the sync cloud. Once we click on the sync cloud button, it will show that we have synchronized this information uh, today at this specific time. And now in the Alexa app, we can now find uh, the devices uh, by two ways. We can tell her to find the devices by herself, or we can click on the discover button in here. Uh, let's do it uh, both ways. 
Alexa, discover devices. She will say. I don't know if you hear that. If you heard that, uh, she says that uh, if you have a hue bridge, you should click on the button. If you have, uh, if you want different uh, direct connection with the hue lights, it's a different. Discovery is complete. I found six smartphone devices. If your Philips bulbs were not discovered. Please press the button on the bridge okay. and rerun discovery. She has found uh, six different devices that we should be able to see in the devices button in the smart home tab. In this case, it doesn't show. I don't know why. Might be a trouble with the Alexa Amazon app. Uh, but if we tell her to turn off uh, any of the objects that we have created, for example, Alexa, turn on office light. She says OK. In this case, it was already turned on. Let me get a little bit closer. Alexa, turn off office light. OK. Alexa, turn on bedroom blind. OK. And we should see how the different values are changing. For example, for the hue lights, we can say Alexa. Turn off hue color lamp two. Alexa, turn off hue color lamp two. Okay. There we go. And of course, we can say, Alexa, turn off all lights. Alexa, turn off all lights. Okay. And it will send the telegram to the logic machine. Uh, turning off and on. Um, Alexa, turn on all lights. Okay. There we go. She has just turned on all the lights. Alexa, turn off all lights. Okay. There we go. So we have a control with our voice uh, using the Alexa device. Uh, in this case, we can use. Searching. I don't see anything to connect. Okay. Check the device you'd like to Alexa, use stop. Make... Okay. Uh, using Alexa, we can, uh, using the lamps uh, configuration, we can create different objects uh, configured with uh, different scenes inside it. So this way we can just, for example, say that, uh, that start a specific scene, given the name, a scene on the, on the logic machine. She will uh, start and uh, control these devices uh, with our voice, all our installation with our voice. Sonos. Uh, Sonos configure. Okay. Um, the Sonos configuration, we have already seen it. We can see it again in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, of course, uh, the Sonos, we have seen that only uh, installing the application. And if we have the Sonos connected, to the same network, it will uh, automatically detect this configuration, these uh, devices that we have connected. And also, an important feature that this app uh, gives us is the capability of controlling uh, not uh, the Sonos, not only from this uh, graphical interface, but also we can use a, this interface as an API. So we can send different values and commands to the Sonos uh, uh, to the Sonos device and control it that way. And another uh, another thing that this application does is create a few uh, items, a few objects in our object list, so we can control the Sonos device directly from KNX. <clears throat> For example, uh, let's go to Sonos and apply the filter. And we have a few Sonos objects that were uh, automatically created. Uh, for example, we have volume and we have, we see, we can see, we can control the value and see the status of the value. We can control the play, pause and next and previous song. Uh, we can see what's the track name in the, in the Sonos. And also we can change the repeat, random and mute object using 
uh, KNX, in this case, Logic Machine, with uh, as it was any other system, and very easy to use. Now we're going to see a, a little bit, very quickly, about the uh, streaming player, the Amati Linea streaming player. To see uh, where's the streaming player connected, we should uh, go and find it, find the IP using a, a, a system that shows all the IPs connected. In this case, uh, when we open the IP of this streaming player, uh, this streaming player has a built-in uh, amplifier, a 55 watts amplifier for each channel. It has right and left channel, one uh, analog output for the subwoofer, and four inputs, four digital inputs, five digital inputs, to connect a regular push buttons and one analog input to control the volume in the system. Uh, this is the main page that we will see. Also, we can go inside the audio player and we can select from different radio stations that we have preloaded. For example, we have a internet radio button and we can select user ra users created stations. In this case, we have a Rock FM. Uh, if we click on the Rock FM and click play, it should start uh, playing some music. And also we have some preloaded radios that we can select uh, from classical music. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of musics, of uh, songs that we can select. And of course we can uh, plug in uh, up to two USB devices with uh, music that we can play uh, from those devices. All this information and all these uh, systems and playlists that we can create, we can select it and configure it to uh, be able to play and, okay, from, uh, we can control this device from the KNX bus. Uh, it's connected only to the Ethernet with an Ethernet cable uh, and we can configure in system configuration. If we go to network, KNX audio control, we can see mapping and then we can map uh, the play, pause button, the next track, previous track, track name, and many other objects into a, a different uh, group address. This way we can control the all this device using uh, KNX uh, variables. Also, we can set up to 12 uh, different uh, tracks and playlists by using a KNX address. If we select, for example, play a track, we can set, for example, the group address 111 and the path of the track that we want to play. In this case, we can put a, a let's say, a sort of ding-dong sound from a, a doorbell button. And we can set this KNX group address to send and uh, play that sound, such as a, a doorbell button and many other, for example, status that we can create using this KNX configuration. Also, we can set a few uh, playlists, up to 12 different playlists that we can uh, cycle through using the next playlist button and the previous playlist, bu play previous playlist button and the playlist select by number. We can map all these objects and select different uh, different values for each one and it will play different songs that we have created in here. Uh, it's a very powerful device. It will have a very soon a, a Spotify connection also. So we can have the control and we can also have control from our from any device such as an Android device or any other device that has the capability of using UPnP and our AirPlay in this case, we can control uh, the, this uh, streaming player using any Apple device. And we can also uh, control this device using any app that supports UPnP. Okay, also, uh, this is uh, the basic configuration of the streaming player. Uh, there we go. And now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, BACnet 
and all its configurations. Let me clean up a little bit. And there we go. Just a second. Yes, Gabriel is going to show you an uh, image about the pyramid concept that we understand. When we have a uh, logic machine, it's a perfect uh, tool for uh, an installation where you, you have a lot of uh, interfaces to integrate together. But the range of the project uh, where one device can uh, assume or afford is uh, not so big. When you have, for example, specific projects or um, uh, installations where you have to integrate several uh, parts of a project, uh, you may need uh, an upper layer for management, uh, for control of all this. Example is uh, if you have a, uh, a chain of uh, 200 stores, uh, where one logic machine per store is perfect solution because you can have DALI, Modbus, KNX, and many other things integrated Bluetooth and so. Um, in the image, you have an image of Spain, but uh, nev never mind if it's any country or, or, or the world entire. If you have 1,000 devices, you may need an um, upper solution, or you may need how to integrate to upload all this data to a central uh, to a central platform where you can manage and integrate everything together even if they are in separated spaces. So what we are going just to show in two minutes is uh, how easy it is to do it when you're using BACnet or even KNX. Uh, we, we can do it both uh, ways, but in BACnet it's very easy to show and, and, and demonstrate it. We are going to use the NetX Automation BMS server that we consider the best option for this integration as uh, it's not depending on any manufacturer uh, and so. so in this case, we have a lot of uh, logic machines. I guess uh, here we can find panel one logic machine. And about the BACnet, what we can do is uh, just to check if the BACnet is activated, the BACnet settings. Server has to be enabled. OK, I am enabling the server. And then I have to go to my object list or table and export, just select the export uh, property of all the objects. As you can see here, we have an export column for our objects that is not selected. I have to uh, select for many, so I can do a must edit about an object property that Gabriel may show you before. Yes, I want to touch this property, export, press outside, select it true for all so once I save, you will see that all this is marked. So again, we can check here how many data points are exported in BACnet. Okay. Let's go again to network and not in settings, but in objects. We can see a list of all the objects that we have in BACnet for this device. We have done exactly the same for the rest of the devices. So now the thing is to use the this BMS platform. Okay. I will stop. This is a program, uh, a software that is intended to be the central, uh, uh, the central engine for a huge installation. You may know that because it's the recommended OPC or BMS server from KNX International for big installations, and it's very, very good uh, and, and compatible with Logic Machine because it's uh, in the different layers, as, as we told you in some communications before. So. It's just two minutes uh, to, in order to explore what we have. Uh, I will, Gabriel, yes. uh, connect, please, the Vago. Yes. Con un cable, coge el de Q. El de Q, por ejemplo, no es vale. So we stop the BMS and we have a BACnet uh, explorer, so we can open. And it will check all the network. Yes, that we are prompted about the IP address that we can use. OK, exploring the network, very easy. It should appear all the BACnet devices that we have, and all our logic machine devices are BACnet. But also, we have a BAGO device here. So we have uh, IPs 13, 11, 21, 31, 41. So all these devices are logic machine, as you can see here. And also we have another one. Okay, just select wherever you want. I select everything, and it's automatically read by the 
by the BMS and we can, uh, when it finished, it's a reading object for all of them, takes some time. When it finished, we can export all, the, of all these objects in a unique uh, item tree. So we can have together um, all these uh, logic matching objects. You can see we have a lot. We have a lot. And then just select export. Say yes, we want to create new files. And then once we say everything is okay, we can exit and see the uh, backnet objects successfully exported. We can exit, start the BMS, and you will see here, this is just a tool for recovering information, uh, but you can create a SCADA, central SCADA visualization with all this information. You can do uh, energy management uh, wherever you need. So, uh, so in a different layer, if you have, for example, 200 stores, wherever they are and worldwide, or you have a flat uh, complex with uh, 200 flats or 500 flats, it's, it's very easy to integrate all the information in one central place where you can have KNX, BACnet, Modbus directly. In this case, we have integrated before in logic machines, and then we have all this information as BACnet. But you should have directly or duplicated in KNX and BACnet uh, for redundancy and so on. So and so. So, for example, if you want to uh, take one panel, you have here the objects, and we have, for example, since this is a backnet object, but we can test uh, writing just to test that we can send some information, and you can see the result in the camera. So, um, let's change the scene to another one, and it's changing. So you have all your objects as a backnet object. It's very interesting because if you have a BACnet SCADA, a BACnet client, you can uh, also integrate many things here, uh, including, and I finished, including uh, for the BMS, uh, as a, for a hotel, for example, including the Fidelio software or the uh, door uh, access uh, w using interfaces like Kava or Vincar, Salto, or all these kind of devices. So we have Logic Machine is a perfect tool for one zone of, uh, of our building, it integrates, you can use logics, it, it's uh, IP router for KNX, uh, but if you have to integrate 200 of this, we have the tool also. So it's very interesting to, to have all these possibilities and, and see the flexibility of the logic machine that can speak, talk with uh, uh, upper solutions. And uh, uh, also very interesting for you that you can uh, focus uh, you can solve any kind of project. It doesn't mind the complexity, it doesn't mind the, the size. Now you can have the tools to be real integrators, I, we, we hope. So, Gabriel, please, you are the <laughs> main <laughs> speaker. <laughs> speaker. Thank yeah. you very much all, to all of you. Daniel, thank you very much for your support. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed this, this training. Uh, but we want not this to be a, just a course, uh, we want this to be a real qualification for you and that you can use the tools um, and uh, that be a, a very good situation for you in the future. I, we wish you very good projects and uh, remember that you, you can use Logic Machine on if they are very big, you, know, you can ask us about these other possibilities to integrate everything. So. Yes. Nothing from my side, yeah. Gabriel. Well, thank you everyone for your attention in these four sessions. I hope, we hope that uh, it was of your like. So, well, we'll see each other see any you. other time. Like and building. <laughs> <laughs> well, see you. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody.